brass knuckles. Right. Oh, so that was part of you sort of like. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was all the way back in like 2012, 13. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was oh, about, okay. about about three, four years ago. Right. So um, I created this thing with two two friends of mine. We was in my studio and we were, you know, definitely dealing with our own issues and like, you know what, we can do this shit. Right. We can do this shit. And, you know, I went outside and was like, well, what are, you gonna call, what are we going to call it? I was like, well, let's call it Brass Knuckles because we want to knock people the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Classic brand yeah. name, yeah. Right. And so we created this brand and we started with a very small amount and we just grew it and grew it and grew it and then this turned into this thing. And it was like, it was very... Um, it was amazing to see the power of the brand, how it started, mm. and you know we built it. There's other brands out there that we 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 view, we view as premium as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at heavy hitters, you look at um, uh, Kingpin, Seventeen Kingpin, you look at uh, Select, you look at all, all these other. I mean, Burner is doing really well. We have all these people in our community that are doing really good things with their brand mm. and so um being part of that was very gratifying for us and so we went out there with you know the intention of putting a really premium card on the market and the, the people spoke and they love it and you know we've grown leaps and bounds there's been some issues you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like counterfeiting issues and that leads to other things mm -hmm. and whatnot but all in all, the brand is intact, and you know, it, as it goes through these transitions and, and whatnot, it's taught me a lot about another side of business that I, you know, learned a lot with. Mm. You know, so in 2013, <laughs> when you started the, this business, though, did you see the legalization movement moving as quickly as it I has? I got some really savvy people around me. Mm. Um, we really looked forward to what the laws and the and the le legislation was going to be, mm. and. Uh, Along with a lot of other people out here that, uh, you know, things change every day, um, but we are determined to stay um, uh, in regulation and we determined to stay uh, with everybody else that's trying to stay in regulation and uh, we, we do better together than we do apart. Mm. So, you know, like I said, we are on to everything that comes out and staying compliant is one of our main goals and we do everything to stay within that box and it's a lot of it's rough at times because there's a lot of rogue shops that are still doing that thing and they you don't give a fuck about the regulations right. <laughs> you know so but all those I mean, dirty shops are going to go away within yeah, the next couple of years right eventually but in the meantime you know a lot of the revenue still goes through there so but so do you guys primarily sell to legal shops out here no we only sell to legal shops okay yeah we're only in california and we're in nevada mm. um and we have uh protective measures to try to counter you know try to counter the counterfeiters mm. um but we're taking measures to do that even more you know? <laughs> The Brass Knuckles brand was an OG Los Angeles company that was apparently started around 1996 and for years they'd be working in the medical industry in LA. In 2015, rapper Exhibit would invest in the company and sometime after that, the legendary music producer Dr. Dre would follow suit and invest in the company as well. But what happened to the brand? In this video, we're going to cover what happened to this once extremely popular brand and analyze what we can learn from this unique story. Please hit the like button, share this, subscribe, and follow me on all the socials. Links down below in the description. Welcome to High Design History. This is kind of a short episode. This is LMC. Let's run it. Starting in November, I will be releasing content on my Patreon two to four weeks early. So if you're looking to support my channel and get early access to some of my documentaries and videos, go check out my Patreon. The link will be down below in the description. Anyways, let's jump into it. So the story begins in LA around 1996 or 1999. It's kind of hard for me to tell just based on my research. It's within those three years. But 1996 happened to be the year I was born and apparently brass knuckles would start to begin to operate in Los Angeles in the medical market and start to build their name. Now, like I mentioned earlier in 2015, the famous rapper and the star of MTV's Pimp My Ride Exhibit would start to invest in the brass knuckles brand. Sometime after Exhibit would get the famous hip hop producer, Dr. Dre to invest in brass knuckles as well. But now in 2018, California would legalize the plant recreationally. But see, LA is a completely different beast when it comes to this new and emerging industry. 
See, LA is ground zero for the beginning of brands starting to get counterfeited or faked. And in this story, the Brass Knuckles brand was one of the very first famous LA brands to get counterfeited heavily. From 2014 to 2018, the Brass Knuckles vape brand would get so heavily counterfeited that it would actually start to really take a toll on the brand's reputation. Now, in 2018, the Brass Knuckles brand would get popped in a scandal, which you can go look up more information on if you want to find out more about it, but it would be involving SC Labs, where SC Labs was caught apparently faking testing results, and Brass Knuckles would get popped for pesticides. Now, there's some controversy with this overall, you know, accusation against uh, Brass Knuckles, because when we think, when we look at the, the situation with the Brass Knuckles uh, brand, we can see that Brass Knuckles was so counterfeited, or more specifically, their carts were so counterfeited slash faked that the carts were that were tested may have actually been fake themselves and actually not from the real source. But it's really hard to tell. You know, if I had to make a prediction, I would say that they were actually not pop for pesticides based on the fact that the California Supreme Court would actually throw out that ruling. But it's still very convoluted. Like, we really don't know. They weren't very clear about whether, you know, they were popped for pesticides or not. But as the courts say it, those testing results that popped for pesticides were not accurate. But overall, right, it can't be denied that Brass Knuckles really represents the first brand in the modern legal market to be overly exposed with an extreme surge in fake packaging. And combine that with a number of bad products that were obviously faked, that were counterfeited, and just, you know, put underneath the Brass Knuckles brand that didn't actually happen to come from that brand, right? It was just faked. It was a recipe for failure. Now, in a hot new hip hop article written in 2018, the writer says, quote, Brass Knuckles is the same product line that was accused of lining their concentrate vape cards with a known pesticides. Now, those allegations have been disproved and thrown out of California's high court, end quote. But it can't be denied that there were people that did get sick from consuming those fake carts that were, you know, put underneath the Brass Knuckles brand. And I think that one of the big takeaways is that if people are faking your brand, you better hope that it's a flower brand and not a vape brand. Because, well, vape brands and the quality control of that product going into the vape brand can really vary and tend to be more susceptible to serious mess ups and potential pesticides, whereas flour seems to be less risky. Anyways, overall, it can't be denied that the news that brass knuckle vapes were unsafe, whether they were legitimate or counterfeited, seems to have truly hurt the brand's perception over time. Now, back in 2018, the brass knuckles company would start to decline, not only because of the testing for pesticides, but because that same year, three investors in Brass Knuckles sued Dr. Dre, an exhibit, for allegedly breaching their contract. According to Afrotech.com, quote, three plaintiffs claimed they were awarded a 14.5% stake, which was less than what was initially agreed on. Their attorney, Larry A. Ekoff, stated that greed was at the root of the lawsuit since it was alleged that Brass Knuckles was worth over $170 million instead of the initial estimate of $50 million. The three people were seeking monetary damages due to the money and the work they put in. Per the outlet, Dr. Dre's lawyer, Howard King said that the lawsuit was, quote, without any allegations of anything done by Dre that would justify naming him as a defendant. And that doing so, quote, is nothing more than a blatant short-sighted attempt by the Platons to generate publicity for their cause. Anyways, that was back in 2018. Now, the reason why I decided to do this story, this quick story, was that a couple months ago, in June or July, I think, uh, Dr. Dre and Exhibit actually won their case 
and was found not guilty. With exhibits, lawyer going to Instagram saying, quote, the truth shall always prevail, took about four years, but defended exhibit and Dr. Dre in this case and sued their ass back too. The plaintiff took zero, not one penny. We will never back down to BS. People can say whatever they want, but be sure to stand up and fight back for what's right. Case closed, notice of settlement publicly filed, end quote. So it looks like that's concluded, but overall, I think that the takeaways from the story is that brass, the Brass Knuckles brand serves as really one of the first brands to suffer from fake counterfeiting. See, Brass Knuckles was actually one of the first brands or vape brands in this actually pretty decently long list of these either medical or recreational market California vape brands that got caught up in getting their brand faked heavily and having people fill carts that had pesticides in it that got people sick that wasn't even filled by that actual company and it actually really really affecting the brand's perception i mean if you look back in 2019 2018 even parts of 2020 you can see countless videos of people talking about the fake carts and still to this day you know it's still a topic that's actually pretty popular but to look back on kind of one of the very first brands that were most famously known for you know getting pop for pesticides and you know putting actually like really really bad stuff in their in their vapes brass knuckles definitely is that first brand when we look at the brass knuckles website today it says that brass knuckles brand is coming back but i don't know if that's really going to happen only time will tell but let me know what your thoughts are about this down below What's your overall thoughts on the, you know, fake cart phenomenon, that kind of fake cart era that kind of started back in 2017, 2018? Anyways, let me know what your thoughts are about this down below in the comments. Hit the like button, share this, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and turn on notifications, and follow me on all the socials if you're not already. The links are down below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this quick high design history episode. Appreciate y'all for the support. Anyways, this is LMC signing out.